Alright, giving all praises on and glory unto the Mosai. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Makakodash. The wall and the apostles and the elders are the rule of a great millstone. Peace and salutation to the sincere brethren out there pushing his gospel in sincerity and truth. Say shalom to the humble and sincere session of there as well. This lesson will be entitled Be Envious of No One. You understand? Be Envious of None. To be envious, right? You know, I'll bring I'll get the definition just now, but to be envious is a a carnal emotion. You understand? Is a carnal emotion, is a wicked emotion, is not of your Bashem Yahushai. To be jealous of another man for his gift or his talent, or to be jealous um towards these heathens, you know, to have envy towards them. Or anybody else of that matter to envy another man for his wealth or for um, the amount of women he has or for his wisdom or whatever it is, you know. Okay, the definition of envy is a resentful feeling towards someone else because of possession, quality of life. And, uh, and good luck. Let's say be jealous. So to envy someone is to be jealous of them, to be to resent them, to despise them, to hate them for their possessions or for how good their life going or whatever the case is. But we are not to have a spirit like that upon us. We are to be content with our lot and content with the things that the Lord has given us. The Sirach chapter 30 verse 17, it says, Death is better than a Salat here. Yeah, death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness. To be envious, to be in a state of envy is to live a bitter life, you know. To, that, would, that would keep you sick in the mind, right? Be envious, being jealous of somebody causes stress, you understand? That negative energy, right, where you're constantly looking upon someone else, well, you know, look what he has. He do deserve that. Why I going through? Why I going through? And he, you know, on top and that whole spirit, that bitter life. And as I always say, a mortal's life is likened unto someone trying to fill a bottomless well. And no matter what you throw in this damn well, it ain't coming up an inch. You could throw the entire sea into the well, it still wouldn't fill it. And that is with that uh, living an envious life is exactly that. Because you will never be content. Right? You envied somebody because they had a certain amount of wealth. If you were to acquire that wealth, you would then go to envy someone else. Because, you know, they, they're making more. And so, so it will go. You envy this man because of his wisdom. You understand? And then, hey, let me say the Lord build you up to have the same amount of wisdom you just envy somebody else who have more. You understand? It just, it, 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 it will make you feel incomplete. Right? But to be content with life, you know, it will bring forth a significant amount of inner peace to where you, and that is why the kingdom of heaven will be the way it is. You read, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The kingdom of heaven, you won't have to envy anybody or desire anything. You wouldn't have to desire for this sort of amount of women or desire for this amount of wealth or desire for your house to look a certain way or to have this amount of rooms. You wouldn't desire to live this long. You wouldn't desire to have this much children. You wouldn't desire anything. You wouldn't need anything. You would not need. You wouldn't be in want of anything. If you desire another child, you could simply go and make one. If you desire a thousand women, you could simply go and get it. If you desire to fly and touch the sun, you could touch the sun. If you desire to go to the deepest depths, you could go to the deepest depths. If you desire to sleep for, for, for five weeks or some crazy thing straight, you understand? You could do that in the kingdom of heaven. No bounds. No bounds. Liberty. Freedom. In Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. 
shall not be in need of anything. Right? You wouldn't be saying, well, look what he have and look what this one have because you would have more than you could ever want. You understand? You could have more than you could ever think of right now. No bounds. You understand? So, hey, we being in this flesh right now, we have to apply these things to the best of our ability and it's not to look upon someone else for upon someone else for the things that they possess. But more so, instead of focusing on the outward, focus on the, right? Instead of external, focusing, you know, on external things, rather focus on the inward man, on the inner self, on the things inside, right? And rather than focusing on, on what someone else have, focus on the things that you possess, that others are dying for. A lot of us take, you know, plenty of things for granted, you know, a good a good functioning body. And let's say that here, yeah, verse 15, Sirak 30 verse, was not of verse 14, it says, Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution than a rich man that has afflicted in his body. Health and good, a state of body are above all gold, and a strong body above infinite wealth. A strong body is above infinite wealth. So some of us, you know, take, we have good working bodies. Sure, it might, you know, a, screws, a couple of screws might go loose at the time. There's a good function, but you could walk, you could run, you could swim, you could jump, you could move. You could breathe properly, you know, you could hear, you could have all the senses, and we take this for granted. We take these things for granted, but that, 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 that gift from the most high, that the Lord didn't judge your ass so harshly that he caused you to be born, glued on to somebody else, right? We all seen, you know, two people, their heads stick up together and... Yeah, the son of the Lord, yeah, the more shit I've seen with the judgments of the most high, boy. You know? You're born and you, and you have no eyes, no nose. You yeah, understand? You're born with, with three legs or some mad shit like that. You're born and you, you, you can't go out into the sun. You know, I see something like that. You can't go out in the sun. I see something where this person had to be drinking gallons of water every single day or else they would die. This woman, she could literally live in, in a lake, or else she will die. You understand? She, she body, she could only survive in this lake for the entirety of her, own, her whole life. Right? The Lord could have give you a fate like that. You know this shit, this Tourette syndrome. I be seeing that the shit is crazy. That you saying shit, you performing actions that you and you not in control. The Lord could have give you. A, a judgment like that, but instead he gave you a good working body. You understand? A, a good functioning system. You know? That in itself, if you content with that alone, that your body is working properly, you wouldn't need anything. You wouldn't be in desire of anything. Right? Strive to be content. Right? In terms of your of your living situation, strive to be content, right? It is okay to want more, but don't make wanting more the center of all things. In terms of your living situation, right? right. You know, it's one thing if you're making a certain amount of money and work, and you would like to strive to you know get a raise or to get a. Um, Promotion, whatever the case is, you know, go ahead, you know, we live in, right? We work, you know, but don't make that your main priority. Be content with what you have already because there's a lot of people that would die to be in your position. You understand? You know, and you could take this example for being the truth. Don't just look upon being a leader or being the head of a camp or being an apostle or being an elder, you know, you think there are billions, millions, you understand, that can't even make it to be in the truth, much less camp leader or leader of us, you know, multiple camps, whatever the case is. But your lot is in, is in life, your lot is in this truth, this ministry, 
You understand? That in itself is enough. Right? Forget about being king of Israel and, and, and disciple and, and top man and all them things. To just be there is more than enough. To receive salvation is more than enough. Yeah, right? We all strive to be part of the governing body, 144,000 elect. But to just be there, you understand? To just, to just be delivered from out of this destruction, that is in itself more than enough. Right? And there's the mindset you have to apply. You see, the scriptures is not just out. The scriptures weren't created for you to just read. It, it, is, the, it is the applying of the material that you read is what matters. By you applying these things. You understand? That is what does build you up. Right? The, the doers of the law shall be justified. So that is the things that is build you up. You know, I want to make this lesson too long. Jump down to Romans. Yeah, get the book of Romans. Chapter 1 verse 24. It says, Wherefore Yahweh also gave them up. To uncleanness, through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Um, who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Let's go. Alright, verse 20. They say, even as the did not like to retain Yahweh in their knowledge. Power gave them up over to a reprobate mind. To do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of Yahweh, despiteful, proud, Boasters, inventor of all things, disobedient appearance, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable or implicable, you know, so like if I say that word wrong and unmerciful. Right? So the key there I wanted is um, full of envy. Right? So to, to be full of envy is to have a reprobate mind. Right? Um, the Lord gave them up to a reprobate mind. So to be a reprobate is to, to to be one full of envy. To be someone that is continuously jealous. You understand? That is to be a reprobate. That is to be a, somebody that is rebellious towards the truth. You understand? Somebody that doesn't want to conform to the words of the Mosai. You understand? Because as the scriptures you previously read, all envy would do is destroy your body, would destroy your mind. You understand? And it's not according to the Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. You know, envy, that, 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 that strong feeling of resent, right, towards someone because of the things that they have. That shit is, that, it will get more carnal than that, right? That is as carnal as it could possibly get, you know, and I just, not necessarily, but, you know, just to get the point across. And it, it is, that why, you know, it's very important also to see see life in multiple perspectives not just through your own eyes because you might watch your life imagine imagine you watching somebody else's life right and you thinking that that person hey you would die to have their life but that person would die to have somebody else's life and they might even die to have your life and then it has somebody else that dying to have the life you live in the job that you hate somebody dying to get at right um the, right, the money you have, the house you have, the possession you have, the wisdom you have, somebody will do anything to receive it. You know, so you look at these things through with all those different perspectives. And you come to realize that being content is key. Do, you know, being content, doing what is necessary. Those things are, are key. The Lord gave each one of us specific tasks specific missions that have to be accomplished right some of us are in trinidad some of us are, the, are in different parts of trinidad 
some of us are in the rest of the Caribbean, some are in North Central South America, in Antarctica, in Germany, in um in London, you know. All over the world, in Africa, Russia, right, through all the four corners. And each brother, each sister was placed, right, just like they, each piece was placed perfectly on the board, right? Each man and woman was placed perfectly in the earth to where is this man in Jamaica, in this city, he is the only one. That has the ability to fulfill that lot. So the Lord gave it to him. Right? The war that this man had to fight. He needs plenty strength. So the Lord gave him more strength. So that he could fulfill this lot. The Lord gave you a certain amount of strength. To fulfill perfectly. The lot that you were given. Because if he gave you too much strength. Or too little strength. The mission might go haywire. You might miss it. You understand? A quote I know in a motivational video I heard it say the um the inches we need are everywhere around us around us because you need accuracy and precision and the Lord gave you the perfect amount of strength and wisdom to fulfill your specific task the exact way He wanted you understand so it's not about stronger. And weaker and who are more and who are and who have less is about the body. You understand? It's about you taking your strength, mixing it with his strength, with his strength, and fulfilling all the missions that were set. Right? Flee jealousy, flee envy. Remove these things far from you because all these things lead to is destruction. It leads to hatred. You understand? Amongst brethren. Jealousy is hatred. Jealousy is a form of hatred. Envy is a form of hatred. And the Lord taught us to love one another, not to envy. Because his strength is your strength. You understand? We is one body. That brother's strength is yours. And your strength is his. We are one. The eyes don't see for itself. You understand? The eyes see so that the body wouldn't run into anything. You understand? If you had, and that why I swear, what use, what use are the, are the hands with no fingers? Imagine you had no, right, everything for after your wrist, gone. Your hands would serve no purpose. But because you have fingers now, right, you get better movement. You could pick up smaller objects, you could hold greater objects. You understand? You could fit into you could fit your fingers into tight spaces to get things. Right? That's to show you, you know, everything is needed. Everything is needed. Where's the point of your lungs? With all that, with all your, your throat, without your nose, you know, that, that area, those areas that allow the air from outside to pass through them to enter into your lungs. Right? Where's the purpose of your knees and, you know, if it didn't have the cartilage there? You understand? Or even your jumping ability. If you, right, if with our jumping ability as humans, if we lacked cartilage in our legs, we would only damage ourselves because there would be no tissue to, to, to create that, um, that cushion, you know, for lack of better words. You understand? To absorb, right, to absorb that, that force. So bones will just be jamming on bones, you understand? Every time you walk, run, jump. So it will, have, it will be damaging itself, but we, we could jump and we have cartilage to protect us. You know, so I'm just trying to bring, bring across that point that everything in the body is needed. You understand? Where's the point of the tongue and the, no, and, and the, and the teeth, right? And the saliva in one's mouth without a stomach. You eating food for no reason. You understand? And where's the point of the stomach without teeth to physically break down the food in the mouth? You understand? So you see, everything is needed. The, everything in the body is needed. You understand? So it's not that the eyes can't envy the ears and the ears can't envy the tongue. The tongue can't envy 
the torso, the torso, okay, and V the legs is all one, right? Look at the brain, for instance. See, the brain is, is basically like the center of this body. But what use is a brain by itself? Nothing. You understand? A brain is nothing. Right? With all the five senses, you know, giving it feedback. If you understand, without it having a body to control, you know, for lack of, of better words, it would be nothing. So everything in this body is needed. No way, so like yeah, if I if I babble in. The Galatians chapter five verse nineteen. It's in all the works of the flesh are manifest. Right? These are the works of the flesh, of the carnal, sinful, wicked flesh. It's here, it, um, it is manifest here. Adultery. Fornication, a chivalrousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings. Right? So, envyings, as I said earlier in the video, is a carnal emotion. It's a wicked emotion. To be envious of another brother or to be envious of somebody in the world is a wicked emotion. You understand? Strive to be content. Strive. And that way it means to be a man, right? To come into your own. You know, I watched a video with a brother. He was talking about coming into your own, right? Focus on yourself. Focus on the things that you have, the things that you have acquired, the things that the Lord has given you, right? Don't watch how much videos this brother can make. Focus on you moving from two videos a week to three videos to four videos to five videos, right? Focus on your betterment. Right, iron sharp, not iron, you know, look after your brother, make sure they go on the right path. But focus on yourself as well, that is the balance. Right, you teach others and you also have to teach yourself. Right, you know, focus on building up your wisdom, study more, read more, right, and man, and come into your own. And all this is the essence of being a man. Right, because what man is it that just constantly watching what others have and ain't focusing on building his own self. Right. Be a man. That is what it is about. That is one of the things that makes a man. Being content. Book of James. Chapter 3 verse 16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion. And every evil work. You understand? And anyway, that, that scripture is clear as, as day. Where envying is, where strife is, there's confusion. Envying brings confusion. You understand? Because it, 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 would, it would disrupt that flow. You understand? It would disrupt the flow within the body. If it constantly having strife, it having disputes, arguments, quarrels, you understand? It having... Envyings who jealous at this one and you know who can't stand this one, right? And all this contention, this tension, you understand? When it's time to do the works, men wouldn't it wouldn't flow. There would be no love among uh, amongst us. So you might want to do the works with he. You might still make you want to talk to he. Um, he talking and you know he may cut you off and that piss you off because you know all well, that wasn't good in the first place, right? All this it will create all that strife, and it would disrupt. It would disrupt the spirit. It would disrupt the flow of the spirit. So that is why I say, that what the scriptures say, to remove envy and remove jealousy, remove the flesh, remove the carnal things of the flesh, and cleave unto the spirit. You understand? And in the spirit, there is no envy. There is no jealousy. You understand? So don't be envious of anybody. There's nothing wrong with honoring someone. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging someone's strength. And, you know, applauding them. Not, uh, not necessarily applauding, but acknowledging it. And, you know, like, hey, but this man, this man's strong. Well, you know, this brother has real wisdom. But this brother could just bring out real precepts. You understand? This brother no real breakdowns, you know? This brother real wise. And it's okay to acknowledge that. But not envy it. And say, well, hey, but this man better than me. But who is me? 
You understand? This man had his strength, that strength, I don't have nothing. Woe is me, woe is me. No, that is not the spirit that the Lord wants you to have. You understand? Acknowledge your other's strength, work on yours. Um, see, Titus. Chapter 3, verse 3. Say for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of power or Savior toward man appeared. You understand? So you see that there was a certain conversion, right? Because we know that our old man is, is crucified, is dead in Yahushai, that sinful man. He died for our sins. Right? So that is the old man. So in the world we were envious. In the world we were jealous. You understand? We envied others. Right? We looked upon our lives and they didn't match up to others, you know. They have more than us and we think they're better than us. So we envy them, right? All that is in the past. All that is the old man. We live new in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh We are new men in the Lord. New men and women in the Lord. So we are not to envy. And a lot of our women have this spirit. You understand? Deep in them, they envy other women. They envy other women's beauty. And we know physical, outward appearance, it, it means nothing in the Mosai's eyes. It might mean something in our eyes because we are just carnal men. But in the Lord's eyes, inner beauty is all that truly matters. You understand? And a righteous man would know that. But our women envy in situations where a man might have more than one woman, this shit could never work out because the women are jealous. They are envious. You understand? They sudden, he sips spend, you know, two hours more. With, and you know our woman could get real petty, real base. He spent two more hours with this one than me. He texting this one more than me. He talk, but he talking to this one more than me. Me, 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 me. You understand? And this, 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 this wicked ass spirit that has befallen all women, even you women that say that you're Israelites, you understand? You push this, this wicked ass spirit, this envious, jealous spirit to where a man must talk to one woman alone. He's not to speak to any other woman. That is, a, that is not according to Abba Hashem Yahushai. That is wickedness. You understand? That is not the state of mind. That Israelites supposed to have. Always are aligned to that of the Mosai's. And envy, jealousy, that is not what the Lord has intended for us. You understand? We are not to be envious one of another. You understand? One to another. But instead of envy and jealousy, show love and kindness to each other. You understand? And with that, all praises. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Akakodash. On to the next one, Shalom.